Hi, it's Kimmy. Um, I have a new tutorial for you guys on flower making. Uh, this one come from just an uh, idea in my sleep, really. Um, I haven't seen it done here on YouTube yet, so I'm thinking maybe I'm the first, but I'm not sure. I look to make sure nobody else is doing it, so um, I'm not repeating videos and over and over and over again. But anyways, um, this is going to be a sculpted flower. It's made with oven baked clay, um, female, Sculpty. I'm using Sculpty. I purchased the big box at a time in the white. And then I purchased the multicolor pack. And you can mix and get the colors you need when you purchase this multi pack. So, okay, so you need the Sculpty for one. You're going to need something to roll it out with. I'm using my brayer right now. Um, I don't have a designated rolling tool. Okay, my husband's calling. Let me get right back to you guys. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, I had to call. Hubby was calling. Or had to answer. Hubby was calling. Blah. Okay. So anyways, um, we're going to be making some molded flowers. Um, I'm going to teach you how to do the cherry blossom or apple blossom today. They look similar. Um, this is what it's going to look like when you're done. I used to do fondant molding and uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, okay, what is the word? Oh, I can't think of the name of it. Gum paste. Blah, okay, sorry guys. I, I talk fine, I get on camera, and I get tongue-tied for some reason. Okay, so what you're going to need is, like, um, the last thing I think I told you was you're going to need something to roll your Sculpty out with. You're going to need some wire. I'm using floral wire. Um, it's kind of a thin wire. So... When you're using this wire, I purchased this at the floral department at Walmart. Using this one, um, I would suggest you double it up. Now, you can use 20 gauge wire. 20 gauge wire is fine. I wanted something green. And um, my closest store happens to be a Walmart. And this is all I could find. So, this is how I do this. I just take and, and I twist, twist the wire up around it and just make it a thicker wire. And it works perfectly for, for this, so, and it's, it's cheaper than going and, and purchasing the, the fondant or the gum paste wire, um, from, like, Michael's. I think I spent, like, two fifty three dollars tops, and I get, let me see, 270 feet of 26 gauge wire, so, it's not bad. So, anyways, you just twist it, and you're gonna want about three inches in length. Just, um, for, you know, just, because when, when you bake it, what I do is I take and I just make a little hook in the end, and I just stick it on to, um, the rack. So it just sits in there, instead of sticking it on a cookie sheet, making dirty dishes or anything, you just hook it and bake it. So that's a little tip. Um, so you don't make dirty dishes and um, run the risk of contaminating your, you know, cooking utensils. And then at the tip, um, it's going to be straight like this after you make the little loop. And you're going to want this little loop there anyway. Because at the tip, you're going to want to take and make another little tiny hook. Because this is what your clay is going to grab onto. And just like if you were using gum paste or fawn it. You're going to want something for it to hold on to. Okay, so you're going to need the wires. I had a couple here made out already. Um, you're going to need some cookie cutter shapes. These are um, the Wilton's fondant and cookie, um, fondant and gum paste flower shapes. And I purchased these off of eBay um, a long while back. Um, they were relatively inexpensive also. And you're going to need a molding pad right here. And this is also for molting, and it's called a shaping foam. So you're going to need that. Um, you're going to need some molding tools. I use these little wooden sticks here that come from Wilton also. And it, I think it comes with this kit. If memory serves me right, I think they come together. But if you're not using this kit and you're using, like, say you're just, you know, cutting the shapes out by hand or whatever, Wilton also has this really um, great kit right here also. And I use it in 
my everyday craft needs inside my craft room. So if you actually do mold fondant and and gum paste, I suggest you buy a separate kit. Excuse me, guys. Ugh. Hiccups. I gotta get a drink. Only happens when you're on camera, right? So I per I would purchase a separate kit for your baking needs if you do that also. So and this one works really well for the um, embossing. Uh, all sorts of different um, things I use inside my, my craft room. So, anyways, um, I don't know. Okay, these are the flowers we're going to make. I think I told you that already. But um, I wanted to show you these. These were ones I made at first to show you guys this technique in this tutorial. And um, the ones, because the other ones I made, I used up already in a project. So, I wanted to show you guys. And so, I burnt them. By accident, I set the temperature at 375 when it's supposed to be 275 in your oven. So, um, I wanted to tell you, don't throw these away when you accidentally burn them. Um, they might, like, if you're into doing um, grunge and stuff, this color comes out perfect, especially with the, the black center. <laughs> but, um, they're, they're totally paintable, totally alterable. So, don't think you, oh, I done ruined my project, I gotta start over from scratch. Paint them. Use them anyway. Don't throw them away, okay? They're not garbage. You know, you put all your hard work and, and effort into doing this. Why throw it in the garbage once you burn it? So, okay. Um, and you could also, even if you just have white, and you could paint these also. So, don't worry um, about burning them. Or if you want to paint them, paint them. They're totally paintable. So, um, let's get this started. Oh, another thing you're going to need is baby powder. Um, Sculpty is kind of a, a sticky clay especially once you've been kneading it for for a while and the tools tend to stick and it will mess up your project um, with it being so sticky so what I do is I take the baby powder and I just take and I just rub my stick tap it off to where it's got a nice little light coat of baby powder on it and you're, it's just like works like flour with the gum paste it won't stick and it's you know that's just another little tip okay so let's get this started Okay, you need your dough till it's, well, dough, your clay, <laughs> until it's pliable. Okay? Then you get your brayer, your, your rolling pin, whatever you may be using, your marker, whatever you may be using to roll your clay out flat. Okay, I take and I pinch it sort of like in a flat disc shape before I start rolling. I lay it down, take a couple pinches of baby powder on my fingers, I rub it on my brayer, and I roll it out. Okay, you're going to want about the thickness of a CD when you do this. You can go thinner, but I would suggest you to get used to the, the thicker um, clay before you start going thinner. Now, if you're a seasoned um, clay artist, then, you know, by all means, go for the thickness you want. But for somebody who's, you know, new to this and it's a new technique to them, I would go the thickness of a CD and no thicker, you could go thinner, it's just your project might end up, because you got to learn the pliability, you know, before you start getting too into it. So I take my little cookie cutter, I'm using the five petal cookie cutter here, and I'm dipping it into my flour, just the tip, to keep it, as you can see, to keep it from sticking into my dough, and my dough sticking in there. Now sometimes the dough will come off into there. And when that happens, just gently kind of coax it out. So I'm cutting out a couple shapes here. And then for another flower I'm going to show you, I'm going to take my little five petal flower and I'm going to dump it, or dump it, dunk it into my flower there, or my baby powder, sorry, it's baby powder. And I'm just going to take and cut out a couple of these little mini guys right here. Okay. And then I'm going to take and just start... Oh, that could have been so bad. I am sorry, you guys. My camera just tipped. Okay. Let me see if I can fix this really quick without having to start over again. Okay. I think that is good. It's not sitting on my pen now. Okay, so I'm just rolling my dough off. Or Why do I keep calling it dough? Probably because I'm so used to working with, like, fondant and gum paste. Okay. And I'm going to set that aside for right now. But another thing is you don't want to leave it out in the air too much. It can dry up on you. So, but for right now, for video's sake, 
I'm just going to try and speed this along. Okay, you're going to need something flat to remove it off of your mat. I'm using a non-stick craft mat. But I'm using my Cricut spatula. And I'm just kind of, you know, sticking it underneath there. And I'm just lifting it off. Okay, I'm going to set them aside and get them all off of there. These little guys. Oh, and now I'm hitting the tripod. I'm sorry, guys. I, f I feel really um, out of sync tonight. So, okay, I'm taking my baby powder, and I'm taking my tool that I'm going to use to mold the petals. Dipping it in the baby powder. Tapping off the excess. I'm grabbing one of my pre-cut flowers. Let me double check, because my camera doesn't look like it's in... I guess it's in. Okay. And what you do is you take the tip, the rounded tip of the one that's got a skewer in, and you just push in. Take a little dot. And you push in on all. If you notice it's sticking, get a little bit more baby powder. Okay. Okay. And then you can kind of sort of mold it into like a little like curling up flower shape if you want. I think that looks pretty when it's curled up. Now there you got the flower. Okay. And I'm going to show you this, this center real quick. Okay, I take my yellow. Okay, actually, before we do the center, okay, you're going to need a pinch of the, the clay right here. Just about so much. Make a little ball out of it. And you take your wire. The straight end, you poke through the ball and bring it up towards the hook, okay? And you kind of just hook it into your clay. Okay, you see that? And then you take your flower and you stick it on top. And you kind of just, not really hard, give it just slight pressure until it is connected to one piece. Oh, get a little fuzz on it. Oh, and it's stuck in the clay. Go figure, dog hair, probably. But anyways, okay, so you got your little flower. There. Okay. Now let's give this baby some character. Okay. So I take a little bit of my yellow. And with this I use my tweezers just because it's such a tiny area inside that flower. And I just place it in there. And I push down with my tweezers and kind of just make the yellow and the white be one piece. And then with the tweezers, if you've got steady hands, you could kind of shape it into like a little stamens that are inside there. Okay. So a little bit on my tweezers. If I could grab this. And then you just push it in there. Make the, the two pieces of clay sort of become one. And then... I normally do three on the inside for some reason. I don't know why. There's no rhyme, no reason. But... It's just what I do. And then when it bakes, there's a flower. When it bakes, it's going to come out looking like so. Okay. And then when you get ready to bake it, you just take and you make a crook, a little hook right there, and put it right on your, your rack. So let me see where I can hang this really quick while I show you the next flower. Okay. So it's hanging upside down real quick. Okay. This next flower. It's going to be super simple. Same technique. Baby powder, poke. Baby powder, poke. Baby powder, and poke. Okay? Okay. But you remember those little itty bitty babies we made? Okay. Let's see. Well, we're going to take this little guy right here. And this is the next size up. It goes this five petal, that five petal, and then this little itty one. And we used that one already. We're going to use this one. Okay? Dunk it in the baby powder. Set it aside for a second. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow here. And I'm going to mold it till it's, you know, soft and pliable. And then I'm going to kind of just flatten it out with my fingers since we're only going to do 
one of these. We don't really need to use the brayer for that. Then I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to put it in my center. And I'm just going to kind of push it down on there. And then I'm going to take one of them little bitty baby white ones and stick that on the center of that. And then you've achieved a whole entire different flower with just a little bit of work. Okay? And you do the same thing. You ball it up. I probably should have done this part first, but... Huh. Okay. You just need a little ball just to hold it on there. You poke it, and then your hook should catch, okay, into the clay. This is what's going to, when it bakes, this hook, is, this is what's going to keep it on its wire, okay? And you just put a little bit of pressure, make the flowers kind of combined. if I can pull this white one off. It's not one to come off. Because I done smushed it. Let me see. This one looks like... Maybe I could do a cover-up job. Uh. Okay. See? No big deal. It's all fixed. But see? There you guys go. A whole different flower. A whole different effect. Okay. And then you just crick it. And then you stick it on your baking rack just like that. And it'll bake up just like that. Okay, I hope you guys try this, you know, if you do a YouTube video or something, or, or send me the pictures or something and show me what you create with this idea. And I'm going to work on molding some other flowers and then maybe do a demonstration and a tutorial video on those for you also. I'm hoping to do a, a rose and stuff and show you guys how to do the, the porcelain looking rose also. But that is the cherry blossom slash apple blossom. So you guys have a wonderful day. And thanks for watching. If you like my video, please subscribe. I, and leave comments. I love every single one of your guys' comments. And I will see you in the next video. Toodles! Hey guys, it's Kimmy. Um, I wanted to come back and show you um, those burnt flowers that I showed you at the beginning of the video and told you not to throw them away. Um, because I painted mine just to show you that they're totally alterable and um, you could clean them up really easily. I took a little bit of green paint because I want to use these in a St. Patrick's Day project and um, I put the little green ball on the bottom and then painted the insides. So that's what these turned out like. See, And then I have the baked ones we did a few of those, just white and with a white bottom. I want to eventually come in and paint the bottom screen to match the stem. But there's one with the flower on the inside we did. And I don't know, I think I'm liking this one the best, where it's just a little itty bitty flower in there, not the double it up one. Because I think it just takes up so much room of the dimension of the flower. So, I think I'm liking this one better. But hey, you don't know until you try, right? And then there's that one. See, each one of these flowers are different. They all have their own little character. And I'm liking them. They're really fun to make. So, those are the flowers that we made. Well, I made. And you guys watch. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I just wanted to show you um, the burnt ones. Don't throw them away. You can paint them up, and it took like two coats of white paint, and that's it. And then the inside paint job. So, and then the or the stem or whatever bud or whatever you call it. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial, and I'll see you in the next video. Toodles.